done at like 11 o'clock. So, so like, Tom, when to, you I, said you couldn't get back to my email, turns out you were burning a 10K, you know, <laughs> marathon. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But the, to be fair, it's one of those things that like there was the flexibility of like workplaces and everyone was sort of doing it and it was okay. But yeah. I just didn't want to have anyone to have a reason to be like, to accuse me of not doing work. It's like, I get a lunch break, so I'm able to run. Why can't I take my lunch? I'm going to be having my lunch at my desk anyway. So technically I'm still working, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like you were you weren't doing anything wrong, but at the same time, you didn't need there to be anything to make yeah. people think you were doing something wrong. Yeah, which I it's understand like, that because you want to run, you want to enjoy yourself, and yeah. you're not going to be able to enjoy it if you're thinking about that. Yeah, exactly. And if anything, it's like you should let me do something. Like, don't be like take everything away from me. It's like it could be a mental thing as well. It could be something I need to do to in order to uh, you know feel like I can be focused on my work. Yeah. yeah. In this person scenario, I do empathize with them because I do think there are times where I felt sick and then as the day goes on, you feel better. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I've had that paranoia to be like, oh, well, I feel good now. Maybe I will go see my friends for drinks. And mm. then mm. there's that paranoia of like, maybe my maybe I'll run into my boss at this dive bar yeah. in <laughs> Richmond. Like, who knows? <laughs> It's never happened, but like it, it could happen. Then, you know, they think the worst because you're out. Yeah. On sick days, like I, I live pretty far away from my work, but on sick days, I set up like a radius of like, where's the safe zone that if I was to go out later on that I wouldn't sort of see anyone? If I go to a shopping center or something like that, what is the safe one that I probably wouldn't run into anyone? I sort of think about that yeah. stuff too. I, I feel like you, you don't need it just because you called in sick, like all right, they've been sick for two days. You don't need to sacrifice the rest of your life because of that <laughs> as well. Like maybe yeah. you're not well enough. Maybe you're not well enough to work. Maybe you you're in a position or a work, a work, maybe you've got a job where if you're sick and you're not working to your best ability, like what if you're a doctor and, yeah. you know, or a surgeon and, you know, if you're sick, coughing into somebody else is quite bad or, or whatnot. Um, well, whereas, I don't you know, he, go to a bar, different. I don't think he was a doctor because there was no mention of the fax machine in the, uh, in the post. So <laughs> let's just assume he's not a qualified doctor. Yeah. The reality would have been, it wouldn't have been a comment on a Facebook post. He would have been, I got an angry fax from my boss. <laughs> 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 Several hours later. Um, in this situation, if you were the person who got caught out by their boss on social media, would you respond via Facebook or would you take it take it offline, as they say, in the uh, the business world and respond to them that way? Oh, no, I'd take it. I'd take it face to face. When you say face to face, do you mean face to Facebook? Facebook or do you mean face to face in real life? Face to face, face, face real life. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, you don't want to, you don't want to have a public uh, stash yeah. online or anything like that. So, so for Marcus, it's like drop the book. It's clean. Yeah. So that's yeah. when you want to confront them. What if? Yeah, that's the thing. If he's enough to sort of bite in the first place, he'd be enough to bite back at your comment. What if you don't say anything and then he's just like he comments again, being like, ah, radio silence. Hey, got nothing to say. Hey, what if he comments? Yeah. That? What do you do? What if? What if he then give just the emoticon, the the sad face emoticon on his comment? <laughs> and just leave it at that. <laughs> no, no, like, no. I've the, acknowledged the, it. I've acknowledged it. If he's like, you're not going to say anything, are you? You just give him the no with a love heart. I think that's all you're going to yeah. do. That's like the most <laughs> like, it's like, huh? are you angry at me? Are you like happy about it? The no love heart works really well at being like, fuck you, no. Mm. Yeah. Look, I, I think that's kind of like what Tom said is kind of a nice way to respond without you getting in trouble. Because I think there is part of it that would annoy me to be like, you're calling me out. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. put some respect on my name. You're calling me yeah. out in front of all my friends and family on Facebook. Like, yeah. you're making this a public issue. That's so, so true. it's kind of like, I kind of, you got. I wouldn't want, I, I kind of want to clap back, but at the same time, I know it's probably not the right business move. It's not right, not good for my career in the long term. It's your loss. Just remember yeah. that. Yeah, you clap back and then on Monday you don't have a job. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So what do we want to say for Vanilla? What do you think we should sort of, does he apologize? In uh, We think we should, he should apologize or is he going to be basically have enough of a, enough of a story that it will be believable? Because that's the thing. When you explain too much, sometimes it sounds like it's not believable. Totally. No, I think Marcus was right in that you just nip the bud and nip it on the bud and you you deal with it face to face and just say I was feeling better I decided to go out I'm sorry if that reflected poorly on you as I you know yeah. you allowed me the day off blah 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 and just bury the hatchet because like you said if you are planning on working there for an extended period it's probably going to make your time very unpleasant if you start up a uh, a social media rivalry with your boss yeah true I mean the other excuse you could always say as well 
is I was still feeling sort of sick and I was fearful that if I get other people in the workplace sick, then the business might go down. I didn't want to do that. You, you can spin it back yeah. that I was trying to do you the a favor. The business will go down. <laughs> well, no, you know. It could if, kill the company. If, yeah, yes. it could kill the company. Whereas, you know, 40,000 people in this concert or whatever, however, however small or large a concert, I don't care about them. Yeah. You, on the other hand, your five employees, I do care. That's the thing. Now with everyone wanting to be COVID safe as well, if you're sick and you feel any symptoms or anything like that, they don't want you in there. No one wants to. If nah. someone coughs now, everyone's just like, oh, no. Is he? Is it? What is he doing? Why are you here? Why would you do that? That's been the worst part of my hay fever uh, coming back for its farewell tour for this year. It's just been like <laughs> it's hit me so hard that so many times I've w- woken up with like an itchy throat and been like, "Covid? Is it Covid?" Yeah. Like yeah. just freaking out all the time. <laughs> just in time for you to go outside. All of the pollen is out there as well, <laughs> just like welcoming you. Oh man, do you know what bummed me out so much? So at the start of the year, we had like the council put a tree at the front of my house. I'm like, oh, that's mm. nice. It'll look good in the street. I mm-hmm. didn't know what tree it was because there's no tag on it or anything. And it's finally blooming now. And mm-hmm. it turns out it's one of those red wattle trees, which is like yeah. a killer when it comes to <laughs> hay fever. So when I walked out the front door and saw it blooming, I was like, you maniacs have killed us all. What have you done? <laughs> Oh it's man! Like what can you that, do? They knew the bubble that's boy when you grab. That, that's that's when you become an axe murderer, Damien, and get an axe and cut it down. Uh, yeah, it's either that or just shelf tell fast <laughs> out of control. <laughs> just wait for the postman to come and step on it. It'll happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a call. All right, we should leave it there for vanilla. So, who wants to go next? I'll, I'll go next. I'll I'll, uh, I'll jump. I'll jump in. Sorry, Damien, but. Uh, I don't know if this is already a scent or a smell that exists. So mm. it, it might be, it might be. But I would like to have a cinnamon flavor. Cinnamon smell. Cinnamon flavor. Yeah. No, but yeah. This is that, a has, bad... that has to be a candle. Surely. I thought you said it was bad bad scents you wouldn't want. No, no I, said, I said you could do a scent that you would like to have in a candle or one that oh. you don't like. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, feel, I feel bad for sort of giving vanilla a bad go because I still don't mind it. But I, I like all scents. All scents are beautiful. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom, you don't have to bad. issue an apology. You do not have to issue an apology <laughs> to the no sense. I jump into the front seat of my car. I drive this car off a cliff because I'm like, I feel so guilty. <laughs> How could I say that about vanilla? I love vanilla. And the worst part is that your funeral, Tom, because of your comments, there will be no candles burnt. It'll be a purely <laughs> candleless funeral. I didn't and that's you, you made your bed and you have to sleep in it, unfortunately. <laughs> Dude, oh, no. Would it be more punishing that the candles are lit, but there's no sense to them? Scent yeah. to them? Oh, yeah. Or, or they're right. all vanilla scented to really rub it. Yes. <laughs> Fine. All right, all I'm right. Not, I'm not, I'm so, too good. Vanilla's too good for this world. I'm too good for this world. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cinnamon. I love cinnamon because my, my partner always yep. has cinnamon in the morning. It's delicious, and I was like, oh, I want some. Anyway, cinnamon writes in. Nice. Worth it to tell my gym that I'm not renewing my membership because of one obnoxious member. I've been a member of my neighborhood gym for about five years and before COVID went every day. One lady at the gym, let's call her Karen, is totally obnoxious. <laughs> She fights with people, hits on men, including me, and makes a big show of herself. A personal trainer told me that she fights with everyone, and I then noticed. I'm not renewing my gym membership. Until it gets cold, I'll go for walks outside, and when it gets cold, I'll use my home gym. And at some point, I'll join another gym at a private club that I belong to. Is it appropriate for me to tell my gym that I'm not renewing my membership because of Karen? That is true. I can't stand the thought of going to the gym and seeing her. I don't care what the gym thinks of me for saying that. Cinnamon. Ooh, that's a tough one. Like, I wonder if a service I really liked, if one person, like, could one person ruin the gym yeah. experience for you so much that you wouldn't go? What do you think, Tom? I, w- I would almost feel like you would have to be in a situation where if you like everything else about it, but you just don't like Karen at the gym, I would almost try to work out her schedule. But obviously, I mean, you go to the gym when it suits you. You shouldn't need to be like, I need to work out at fucking 11 p.m. because Karen's not there. <laughs> like, Tom, you need Tom to work becomes it a stalker. Out. Tom, Tom becomes a stalker of Karen just so yeah. he can avoid Karen. <laughs> <laughs> in order, in order to, to, like, to not see Karen, I have to see Karen for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> That's the only yeah, way I can get it done. It's like, it's like, um, it's like uh, you know, when it's like the, your parents, um, I think it was like in The Simpsons, like they catch you smoking a cigarette. It's like, well, you're going to smoke this whole packet as punishment yeah. to be like, you're not going <laughs> to like cigarettes after this. It's like, well, you're definitely not going to like Karen after this. <laughs> <laughs> 
But if, if this was some weird rom com, then Tom would start to develop feelings for Karen and then yeah. intentionally write into her at the gym and then they'd fall in love, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Da- Damien, you need to think of a good pun for that uh, a gym pun uh, romantic comedy. What would it be? Oh, uh, let me spot put it in the in the pun. Oh, what are you going to say? Spot me? Is that what it's going to no, be called? Say, I don't know. <laughs> spot, spot my heart. Yes. Spot my heart. <laughs> Um, so what do you guys reckon? Oh, man, it's so tough because I do feel like some gyms, there are like, it's like cheers in the sense that they're like the regulars you see all the time. And yeah. like there, there was definitely when I was going to gym, there were, it didn't matter what time I went, people would always be there. If I went at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., yeah. it was the same people always there. And it's like, do you guys just perpetually, are you paid to live in this gym? Like, how are you always here? So they're, maybe that's the case with Karen. Their job is to peacock the gym, you know, like be a really yeah. buff man walking through the gym saying, hey, you know, if you work out real hard, you can be this mm. big. I remember I, ha- I went to gym, not that I go to gym often, but I remember going to gym and I always remember seeing these one or two guys that were absolutely buff, but they were, I recognized them because they were always in tracksuit pants and a hoodie <laughs> the whole time. I'm like, right. how could you work out in a hoodie like that? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like wouldn't that hoodie sweat, like smell bad? Anyway, Have that's, you that's seen how Rocky? I recognize them. Yeah, yeah, well, it's how no. you burn the most. It's how you burn the most. <laughs> Maybe it's like you True. know, in clubs they have like dancers that they pay. They pay the they pay the men to be there to sort of walk around and be like, "I'm muscly. You can be muscly too with this machine." Yeah. I, I was actually going to say that. Like, do they? Is it like the sexy women thing of like paying women to be in a club, that type of thing, just to hang around mm. so people are like, "Oh, I'll come in," and then as yeah. soon as they have everybody's entry fee, all the sexy women leave, and it's like you're trapped now. <laughs> I think what we're forgetting is that guys that are like super duper buff. Love showing off that they're super duper buff. They'll do it for free. They'll do it for free. And they'll, they'll do it. They'll do it just to be admired. You know what I mean? That is enough payment for them. That's, That's a good true. point. That is a very good point. I'd probably, if I was that jacked, I'd probably get my. I'd do a couple laps of the gym just to let people know around. what I'm all about. Yeah. Now, my question for you guys as well, because I'm not a very big gym buff. Like every time I went to the gym with my friends, like, oh yeah, I know that guy. I know that guy. I'm like. How do you make friends? With, like, are you guys going yeah. to the gym that often or did that you made friends with people there? Like gym buddies? So, like, it's an awkward thing because, like, me as a man, I don't really want to sort of be, um, I mean, like, if you happen to strike up a conversation with someone and that happens that ha- naturally, so be it. When people would sort of talk the most is with my my gym, it was sort of like we do a class and then at the end people stretch. Like, you stay, stick around and someone runs a stretch session. So that's when people sort of start socializing a little bit. Um, and you might get to talking. Um, people might get to talking. I would always sort of just keep to myself and then get out of there um, pretty quickly. If I have to go to work, I have to have a shower and stuff. So I'm not there to socialize. Tom was always known as the loner of the the, <laughs> the, the gym group. I run away as soon as it's like social interaction. I get really scared. <laughs> I start sweating more than I, I was when I was actually <laughs> in the session. Sweating on top of my sweating. Tom's final uh, final like rep for his workout is he just gets the whole class to stand around him and he just pours sweat, just <laughs> loses all that body water because yeah, of the it's social like pressure. It's like a sauna yeah. for me. The social sauna yeah. is what they call yeah, it. The social sauna. <laughs> Um, the other thing I was going to ask you is, are you guys a part of anything that you feel like it's your duty to tell them why you're leaving? Oh, uh, like a club or something like that. A club, uh-huh. not just a gym membership, because this is this is the other part of the question. He's only like he's going to leave. He's he's not even going to try and be one back. He's just like I'm leaving. But should I tell the gym that I'm leaving because of that bitch or not? Yeah. Do they want the feedback? I think any club that takes your money, like, and is providing a service, I think you're welcome to give that feedback. I mean, I wouldn't be like yeah. super harsh and. But this woman does sound inappropriate. If she's like hitting on every single person and start actively starting fights with people, I think it's a completely <laughs> valid reason to be like, uh, you're losing a member because of this one member. And if there are multiple complaints from other members who are leaving, then I guess it kind of v- validates your your problems with the gym. Yeah. I think in this situation, <clears throat> they would want to know why you're wanting to leave anyway. And this might not, like they might want to know, oh, are you going to a cheaper gym? Are you doing this? They want to know for themselves. And it's not necessarily that telling them that Karen is the problem Problem, they'll be like, oh, we got to get rid of Karen. Because I think what they'll do is you'll probably find that they have trainers with a bunch of different personalities because they appeal to every different person. You know what I mean? Like you might have like the the sweet, quiet, you know, the sweet, um, 
you know, thoughtful trainer that is there to sort of target those sort of people. And then you've got that intense Karen who wants to, you know, British, uh, uh, she wants to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu with everyone that she sees. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to grapple and wrestle. And people might like that sort side of things. So it appeals yeah. to a different person. They probably wouldn't get rid of Karen. They'll be like, no, you know what? Uh, enough members like her that we're not going to get rid of her, but we just wanted to know why you wanted to leave. But yeah. she doesn't work there, does she, Marcus? No, no she doesn't well, work. Oh, she's a, she's a member there. She's a yeah, member that's there. What yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying, Tom. Oh. She's just like, she's just a lady hanging out at the gym. <laughs> Oh, she's a thug then, isn't she? She's just like... She's Tom just thought she was a person. Bully. I like that Tom thought she was a personal trainer hitting on people and starting <laughs> fights with people in the gym. Oh. I'm it's like, like, maybe that's a persona they want to have. Could you imagine like... 